who you trust more, an AI that always gets an answer or one that knows when to say, I don't know. In this video, I will show you how to build AI models that you can trust. Hi, I'm Calvin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. Okay, so there is something called the Miranda warning that says something like, you have the right to remain silent, everything you said can be used against you in court, okay? And we allow that, we allow people to avoid answering because we don't want people to self-incriminate, we don't want people to be held accountable for things they actually don't know, just because they need to, you know, answer a question, they, they, they feel they need to respond um, to any question, okay? So I always ask myself when I am working with another expert, for example, my accountants, my lawyers, etc. Um, whenever they say, I don't know, I kind of trust them even more, okay? Because I know that whenever they give me an answer, then that answer is something they are quite confident about it and that they can be accountable, that they can, that they feel they are giving a professional answer, okay? And I know when they are saying, I don't know, they will do the job of looking more for that or we need to go for for finding a better answer, okay? But I, that gives me trust, that gives me confidence that they are when they are answering, they are providing the actual response. With AI models, it's kind of the same, okay? So I feel it's over demanding for AI models to ask them to be always answering the right response and forcing them even to guess in cases where they are not confident, in cases where they were not trained to, to react, okay? So in this case for AI models, this capacity of saying I don't know is known as the reject option, okay? It's basically when the models can say, for example, um, yes, no, or I don't know. So reject, abstain from answering to that question. Okay, so let me give you the two examples. Let's say you have a model that can that can say if a patient has cancer or not. Which model would you trust more? One that always says yes or no, the patient has cancer or the patient doesn't have cancer. Or a model that says, you know what, this patient, I don't know what is the diagnosis, so let me move this case to a human expert, to a second opinion where they can provide an answer or to, a, to, a, to another type of screening method that can give us more evidence of what is going on with the patient or not. For example, if you have a certain model that is monitoring your your pipeline, your manufacturing pipeline, for quality assurance, for example, I will trust much more a model that can tell me, you know, this product is okay, this product has a defect, and this product, I don't know, please, technician that knows how to monitor, how to visualize the, the potential failures of a product, please validate what is going on with this product because it's not something I have seen in the past, okay? So adding this capacity is actually like life-changing for many applications, and being able to do this in your business, being able to rely on models that can abstain and collaborate with a human or with other models or with other techniques to actually give a final verdict of, of the of the a final answer of the problem is life changing and, and will allow you to expand the kind of use cases that you can tackle. So how can you use this kind of reject option in business? The first strategy is by doing filtering. So what is filtering? Let's say you have here your set of activities, okay? that precede the AI, then you have an AI here that for most of the cases can actually automate the response. So these are the cases that, they, uh, that the AI actually handles. So these cases are automated and then there is a subsequent step. So post uh, step, okay, a posterior step. And then you have here another sequence, okay? So basically the uh, extension, the reject option is handled in this way. For most of the cases, let's say for for 90% of the cases, for whatever percentage, the AI can automate them. For the rest, let's say the, the opposite, the 10%, the AI asks for help, okay? And this help is given by a second opinion, by a second AI, by a second human, okay? So here it needs support, let's say. Support, okay? This support will do the task that the AI wasn't able to automate, and then you can keep on with your workflow of, of activities in your current pipeline, okay? So it's basically adding this additional stage here, this additional set here, uh, which is like a fallback option where the AI cannot answer, where the AI is not available, okay? This is the first option. The other option is even on cases where you want the AI to guess, it's easier to build a more, you know, an easier, a, a safer deployment if you do the AI, if you if you deploy the AI uh, incrementally, okay? First, only covering, let's say, the top cases where the model is more confident, okay? So if you have all these cases where the confidence goes from 0% to 100%, 
we start only handling these cases and then as you gain trust in the AI model you start giving more and more and more and more and more even if the AI is not that confident about these cases you know that the risk you are taking at that point is at least as bad as the one that you had before okay so you already know what is an indication of how much risk you are getting so even on cases where you will allow the AI to run like by itself even guessing on the cases where it's no safe I will do my initial pilots okay and this is for the initial pilots doing an incremental deployment following the reject option uh, strategy okay so these are the basically the two strategies that you can use business-wise to modify the activities and to plan your your roadmap to deployment for your AI models okay so if you by the way if you don't know how to deploy AI models we have an online course the data net course with which will give you four patterns for business for uh, for integrating AI models into any business I will leave a link below where you can subscribe to the free preview of the course so there is this trade-off in in reject option between the let's say the percentage of I don't know the percentage of times that the model says I don't know which ranges from zero percent as I said to a hundred percent so zero percent the model always guesses a hundred percent the model never responds okay so it's a completely useless mo useless model and the performance okay the predictive performance I will say accuracy although it doesn't have to be accuracy it can be your business metrics your business KPI and so with the models when the model says uh, rejects 100% of the cases we know the accuracy is like 100% because it never fails right when the model never rejects it's our baseline which is what we are typically used to have with AI models which is models that always give an answer okay so let's say that your accuracy when the model when the model never rejects is 80% okay then you will observe something like this okay you will observe that the AI uh, as rejects more cases basically the performance starts to increase you can see different behavior like maybe you can see something like this or you can see something like this but you will observe that as you ignore most of these cases where the model is not confident your performance will improve okay so there is this trade-off the, the goal here is you know understanding what is the right trade-off that allows me to make my use case my AI use case uh, viable in terms of the in terms of the money I'm making and uh, how much I am automating how much I am keeping manual okay so basically how can you compute the expected impact for any of these use cases for example let's go with um with my pattern of filtering for business integration what i need to know is what will be my performance if i don't have this bottom part okay so basically if the model predicts a hundred percent of the cases okay i compute you know how much money i will make this will basically mean the model will fail so it will have an accuracy let's say of 80 percent let's say 80 percent so i need to compute how much benefit will i get from this 80 percent and how much i will lose from the errors okay this is the the as is so zero percent um rejection and then you need to basically see how the model improving accuracy or in any kpi you are evaluating for different percentages and for any given percentage you will understand that the ai will basically automate x percent of the cases okay and will reject the, the, the remaining percentage right a hundred minus x okay so now the expected impact of the model is how much i will gain from this x percent okay and basically here you have two things you have how much value are you gaining from the accurate from the accurate cases and how much is are the losses for the cases where it fails and then of course you need to account for how much are you gaining and, and spending on the cases that the model didn't automate so for the 100 minus x percent you need to understand you know how accurate is your current process i guess your current process is like a human for example and that human will have a, a certain error rate okay so the accuracy and the losses the accuracy and the losses of course if the human you know need to compute 100 percent of the cases then you will have larger losses or largest incurring costs on the manual work and as you move the to the ai handling the vast majority of the cases this component uh, will decrease you need to be aware that there is always like a 
a baseline and a fixed component of cost, both for the AI, which is infrastructure, and for the human component, which is salaries, etc. And then on top of that, you will have an elastic cost on each one of the cases, depending on you know, how much you abstain, how much you predict. Okay, so you need to do this math game. It's an easy math game, but you need to understand all its components to properly decide what is the right trade-off between abstention, saying I don't know, and the accuracy that you gain from the model. Okay, so. Now we basically cover uh, how to compute the expected impact. Let's go for the final case, for the final part, which is how to get such kind of models. Now I will get a bit more technical, not much, I promise, um, but it's something that you need to understand. The easiest way to, to have models that say, I don't know, is basically by looking at details. I have talked about this in the past on a video that is uh, mediocre models that make money. I will leave the reference in the end. And it's basically using the same technique. So you get your predictions, okay? Predictions. Okay, and this is the distribution of your predictions. Basically, you only predict for the tails. So here you will answer, okay? And the remaining ones you say, I don't know. I don't know. So if this is a probability of cancer, you will predict for the cases that the model says, for sure, this patient has cancer, and on these cases, uh, for sure, the patient is healthy, okay? And the cases where the model doesn't know, basically, you just pass that to a, to a doctor, okay? So basically, look at the probabilities and choose two thresholds, the, the, the threshold from the lower bound and the threshold for the upper bound, okay? And you choose these two, these two thresholds in order to maximize to maximize the rock you see, the accuracy, the amount of money that you are making, okay? That's the simplest way, but it's not enough, okay? Because what this approach is basically doing is if you have, for example, here, one of the classes, healthy, and the other one uh, here, let's say, it's a uh, cancer, basically you are just keeping here a margin of safety, okay? Where these cases, you are automating them, these cases you are rejecting, okay? But this is not enough because it's not allowing the model to say, you know what, maybe I can focus not on building this line because you know, here is another area where you have a lot of noise, okay? But instead building two planes, okay? One where I'm quite confident and the other one where I say, I don't know, okay? So if you allow your model to predict which cases it wants to answer and which and what is the answer for those, then you are allowing the model to basically ignore parts of your data where the decision is more complex and making the best work they can do on the other cases, on the remaining cases. How can you do this? Quite simple. So you have your input. Here you have your model, okay? And basically now instead of giving one response, which is probability of cancer or the probability of being a, a damaged product, you have two outputs, okay? One if, is if the model will abstain or not, abstain, and the other one is the answer, in case it's not abstaining, okay? In the optimization, in the loss function, you will put two terms where you will limit the amount of abstentions that you want, and only will and you will only punish the model for errors on the cases where it didn't abstain, okay? So it's relatively easy to implement, okay? So if you like this video, remember, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and I hope to see you on the next video. See you soon. Bye-bye.